such short notice. I'm attorney Gerald Griggs, G-E-R-A-L-D, G-R-I-G-G-S, and I represent the family of Joycelyn Savage. And we all saw this morning and sometime last night clips and the full interview uh, CBS This Morning with one Robert Sylvester Kelly. And we want to clear some things up of the falsehoods and, and the many uh, alternative facts that were given by one Robert Sylvester Kelly. We want to first acknowledge that at no point did the Savage family provide or sell their daughter to Robert Sylvester Kelly. And we have proof and we have receipts. Uh, we need for the public to understand that this is a prolonged legal battle and we want to make sure that accurate facts are put out there. We also understand that Mr. Kelly made certain uh, indications that he has never had sexual relations with any underage women. We also have proof through flight tickets of one individual who was clearly underage when he made arrangements to fly that individual out. We will provide that information to you, the press, so that you can have it directly. It's important for the facts to come out and the truth to be known about this situation. This family has not spoken directly to their daughter in two years. They have tried every single uh, tool available them for them legally to make contact with their daughter, including but not limited to contacting three of Mr. Kelly's managers, contacting three of Mr. Kelly's lawyers, including his last lawyer, Steve Greenberg, whom we sent a letter directly to in January. We have received no confirmation from anyone associated with Robert Sylvester Kelly whether this family can speak to their daughter. And when I say family, I mean more than just the parents of Joycelyn Savage. Her two sisters are here and they will have a brief statement to the press about their desire to speak directly to their sister. If there's nothing going on, if there's no problems and she's in a consensual loving relationship with Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly, she could easily speak to her two younger sisters, her grandmother, her aunts, her uncles, her immediate family. We are in a battle to make sure that she is not a victim to the allegations that we've heard and now the charges that we've heard against Robert Sylvester Kelly. We know of three investigations, one of which has already led to 10 charges and four different victims, three of which are new victims. So we want the record to be clear that from the very beginning of this, the Savage family has brought this to light because they didn't want another victim. They didn't want the world not to know what was happening. But we also now want to provide facts and proof. Mr. Kelly stated on Gail King's show that Mr. Timothy Savage provided his daughter on stage at a concert that Mr. Kelly was performing at. That is absolutely not true. And we have the ticket request and the ticket records that show that at no point has Mr. Kelly ever met Timothy Savage. Mr. Kelly's uh, private manager, Ms. Cheryl Mack, provided the tickets on Sunday, May the 24th, 2015, to fly John Julian Savage out to the concert. We will provide proof and copies of this uh, so that you can understand. It was provided by Cheryl A. Mack and sent to her email of an American Airlines ticket. So we would ask Mr. Kelly if he has proof, show his receipts. He also indicated that these parents came forward after the money stopped. I can state here unequivocally that at no point have the Savages requested any money from Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. They have never received any money from Robert Sylvester Kelly. They don't want any money from Robert Sylvester Kelly. Now, he has settled at least six known cases with non-disclosure agreements with large substantial payouts to individuals. Maybe he's confusing those payouts with the Savages. And the question is, why was he making those payouts if there was nothing nefarious happening? We believe that there are enablers that have allowed Mr. Kelly to participate in the crimes that he's alleged to have committed, but we want the record to remain clear that at no point did Tim and John Jalen Savage ever request, ever demand, ever receive any financial compensation from Robert Sylvester Kelly. We also have proof 
of an American Airlines ticket for one of the individuals that we believe is being held against her will that was dated on April the 29th, 2015, which is clearly showing that she would have been underage when she, when she arrived in the custody and control of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So again, the ball is in Mr. Kelly's court. Make Jocelyn Savage available to her parents in person in a neutral city or Atlanta, Georgia, so we can have a direct conversation with her about this alleged consensual relationship. And should you continue to defame my clients, you will see us in a court of law in Fulton County, Georgia, where we will prove exactly what we're saying is the truth. This was never about a legal case. This was about returning Joycelyn Savage to her family. At this time, I would like to ask her middle sister to come up and give a brief statement to show that Jocelyn Savage is not communicating with her family. Hello, um, I'm Joycelyn Savage, middle sister. Joycelyn recently has been out in the media lately making, well, being, being controlled by R. Kelly. And if, some, if people don't realize it by now that most of the stuff that's being said in the media of her saying she's fine, she's okay, I'm, I'm not, you know, being abused, she, she would have called, she would have called home by now. She would have called my mom, my dad, she would have called my little sister, she would have called me, her grandparents, anybody. Um, I know for a fact my sister is not okay. I know for a fact R. Kelly is mentally destroying her um, and I just want her home. And I know that he has put a lot of things in her head that makes her think that the world, not just the family, but the world is out to get her, which is not true. And I just want her home and safe, and I want to know that she's okay. That's all I want to know. Thank you. And just to further emphasize the damage that is occurring because of the lack of contact for well over two years, I would like to call up her little sister to make a direct plea to Joycelyn Savage. Um, I am Joycelyn Savage's little sister. I haven't seen my sister in two years, and it's very heartbreaking because I can't see her because I feel like she's being controlled by someone that doesn't want to talk to me. And plus, I haven't seen her, and I haven't talked to her. At least she can call her family or me for my birthday, Christmas or even talk or go to her grandfather's funeral for the most part's sake. Thank you, Jory. And so I do want briefly Tim and Jonjolin to speak to you guys, and then we may take some questions. Uh, but Tim, go ahead and speak. I want to thank y'all today. Uh, the allegations that uh, Mr. Kelly has brought against my family is very horrific and it's just unworthy of my family to deserve any type of uh, things that he's saying in the media about us. We are a solid family. We care about our daughter. From day one, the only thing we want to do was actually to see our daughter, hear from our daughter, and make, she's, make sure she's fine. If she wanted to carry on a relationship with Mr. Kelly, that would be her prerogative. But as a parent, our thing is to make sure that she's healthy, safe, and sound, and make sure she's fine. That's what we've been saying since day one. We have been on the media multiple times. Even when Mr. Kelly has had a concert here in Atlanta, Georgia, we have went to the press, and the only thing we wanted to do to make sure our daughter was healthy, safe, and sound. If she wanted to continue with a relationship with Mr. Kelly, that would have been her prerogative. But the most important thing for us to make sure she's healthy. Thank you. I'm Jocelyn Savage's mom, John Jolene Savage. Um, only thing I want to say, if Jocelyn, if you're seeing this message, please know that I love you. I'm your mother. I love you dearly. Um, nothing that we've done was to defame you or to embarrass you. It's because we care about your well-being. We went from seeing you or talking to you daily or weekly to not seeing you in two years. So that is a clear indication to us 
and as a mother that something's definitely wrong with this situation and we won't stop until we have our answers and make sure your well-being is okay and that you're safe and sound thank you and so just to reiterate the the statements that mr robert sylvester kelly stated about the savage family receiving funds we have not received any funds there's absolutely no proof of us receiving funds and we would ask mr kelly if he truly believes that provide the receipts we've also and will provide dante will provide you the emails that show who flew jonjolin savage up to the concert to meet with mr kelly for a business relationship a business arrangement uh, where he was supposed to produce music for joycelyn savage for sony we have proof of that as well this case is about receipts and it's about actual proof and so with that i will take any questions that you may have in the media we've had to uh morning when, when Gail King interviewed, the, the uh, interview with Gail King and Mr. Kelly this morning, he spoke specifically to that first meeting at the concert, and your attorney representative, you know, talked to you about that. Could you talk a little bit, walk us through what happened at this concert? He said you were angling to get her on stage, and that's where it all sort of started. So can you kind of clarify that? Yeah, of course. That never happened. Um, what Mr. Mr. Kelly's manager came to our boutique to see the girls perform. And he wanted them to uh, see how a big crowd, cause Jocelyn had already performed with other artists here in Georgia. She was already had uh, a EP, which is multiple songs already out. And he wanted her to see a stage performance of a big, large crowd. So it wasn't just Mr. Kelly was there. It was other artists that was there also. That, so the whole thing was for them to actually to go there and see how big of an artist and see and, and actually get a feel for what it's like. And, then what happened? and from there, uh, Mr. Kelly had passed on a number. Uh, I, I guess one of his, his nephew, his nephew, which is my daughter, was there, Jalen. And uh, I told Jalen to give me the number. From there, my wife took over the number and they made contact with Ms. Shira Mack. And that's when the meeting adjourned from there. You guys went to Chicago when he turned himself in a couple of weeks ago, is that correct? No. 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 We, we, we planned on going to Chicago, uh, but we received word from law enforcement that it would be better for us uh, to remain here in Atlanta and let the investigation continue. Why is it you think she's being held against her will when she has gone on record as saying that well, she, she doesn't want the contract? Let me explain, everyone. My father passed in 2017. My mother, Shirley Savage, also wanted to speak with my her granddaughter. She pleaded on YouTube, because that's the only line of communication to try to reach out to my daughter. My mother was very ill and my father was very ill. She actually tried to communicate with Jocelyn, had no communication, and my father passed after that. She was supposed to come to the funeral. We made every, try, every type of way to reach out to her to get her to come to this funeral. No way, form or fashion did she show up. No type of contact was made. And at that point, she did not come to the funeral. And remind me, grandfather and granddaddy and Joycelyn and me and Joy were very close with them. Yes, very also, close. they was very close with them, uh, with my uh, father. So let's be known that as a parent, as a grandparent, as uncles, as uh, niece, nephews, whatever, you have some type of relationship that you can't talk to anyone in your family, no one, if it's not me, if it's not my wife, not her sisters, no one, grandparent, is that normal, guys? You tell me if it's normal. I don't think so. That's a sure sign of Stockholm Syndrome that's going on right now. And this is hard to see what we're doing. Yes, we did watch it as a family. It's, it's disturbing. It was mostly disturbing for all of us. I sit there and I want to not just pray for my daughter, but pray for Mr. Kelly to get some type of healing. I am a man that grew up in the church. My daughters grew up in the church. My family is a church going a family. And we believe that Jesus Christ will always help all of us. And that's my beliefs. And that's what I'm praying for Mr. Kelly to get some type of help and let law deserve let the law 
make the choose make the choice of actually bringing justice to Mr. Kelly, and bringing my add, daughter home. I want to add uh, the, what I saw on TV this morning about his way he acted when he got upset. I can only imagine what he does in behind closed doors when he's not in camera. What do you mean? Explain. Um, he has allegedly he has this bad temper. He's very controlling, and when the girls don't do something or say something that he likes. He, re he really um, throws a rage and becomes physically violent to the girls. Well, you're speaking of the part where he got up in the interview yes. and he started with his fist. Yes. So, uh, so when he saw that, that's what he was thinking? Yes, of course. What's your reaction when he specifically asked about your daughter and, and then he talks about a mother and a father and his daughter and his daughter. What's your reaction to that? And, 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 and again, to get into that, that's the part where I think that Mr. Kelly is treading very closely to defamation uh, because at no point did this family sell their daughter to anyone or provide their daughter for anything for money. Well, I know that's a fact, but you talk about your personal reaction. Did you hear him say something like that? Okay, go ahead. Uh, it's very heartbreaking. I love my daughter to death. I love all my kids. Me and my wife been married over 23 years. It, it hurts me so much to hear that being said. And um, it, it, it's, it's just speechless to hear that saying that uh, we would sell our kids. That's unheard of. It, to me, uh, as a mother, it only confirms what allegations of what uh, extent he would go to to cover himself. So it's very heartbreaking to know the truth and to know what he's saying on live TV. Um, it confirms even more of what we've known for over two years. And then one more thing I want to mention. Uh, it's a lot of people out there saying it's the parents' fault. Um, blame the parents. The parents should go to jail. And people asking, why did you, you know, why did you give your daughter to R. Kelly? The thing is, my sister was in business, music, and only. Like, she was working for him for only music purposes only. And the thing is, it's no different from, you know, Lady Gaga. And they was, like, talking about how the ap after the allegations came out, why y'all knew about the allegations back in 2000, was it 2006? 2000, back in 2006, 2008. So why did you, you know, still let your daughter try to work with him? It's no different from Kiki Palmer working with him afterwards. No different from, you know, Lady Gaga. All these big-time artists is working with him. It was only business purposes only. Only that's it, and I just wanted to make that clear for my parents, for my parents' sake. But thank you. And and here's another indication of the level of control. Um, Joycelyn Savage has a social media account which she has not posted in well over since 2016. 16. 2016. Mm -hmm. So my question is, she's free to come and go as she pleases. Why is she not allowed to freely come and go and post as she wants, do whatever she wants? We are seeing in real time what's actually happening uh, in this case. And what we want the public to understand is that facts matter, not alternative facts, uh, not what you want to believe. We have the facts, we've turned them over, and we will continue to turn them over to law enforcement, and we continue to try to make contact with George and Savage, because this is about demanding justice. We've been on this case uh, since the very beginning. It's been very trying. It's been very difficult for this family. Uh, you can only imagine the emotional trauma that is occurring uh, for them for simply wanting to see their oldest daughter. Uh, so we're just asking uh, for the public's prayers, but more importantly, we're asking for prosecutors to move swiftly and expeditiously, not only in Cook County, but also in Fulton County and also in the state of New York, because we saw in real time Mr. Kelly give his testimony and his testimony is not accurate and is not continual with the facts as we know them. So it's time for prosecutors to act. It's also time for us to have a direct meeting and conversation with Joycelyn Savage. You guys I think it. I think it did, and you know, as a as a defense attorney, I've been a defense attorney for 14 years. You you never really want to put your client on the stand. You definitely want to put your client in front of a camera, and so for him to refute the facts 
and not even know the facts, particularly when there's DNA in this case and there's multiple tapes that are quite clear from the pictures that I've seen. I've not watched the tape because they are child porn, but I've seen the pictures. It's quite clear that it is Robert Sylvester Kelly uh, in the tapes. So, you know, as, as, as counsel, I would have advised him not to make the tape, but as counsel for the savages, I'm appreciative for the tape. I'm appreciative for the interview because it confirms what we already knew. It confirms that when he's pressed, he gets angry, he lashes out, which is what America saw. And so now I'm hopeful that the prosecutors will use that tape against Mr. Kelly. I'm also hopeful that they will make contact with George the Savage immediately, because imagine if he would do that on live national television, what he would do behind closed doors and what links he would go to make sure that, as he said, it, his life remains the way it has been. Um, so that, that's my response to seeing that uh, that interview. Um, and I thank CBS for doing the interview. But I would like the rest of the press to understand that facts are important. Uh, that we need to make sure we hold them accountable to the facts. And when you have an opportunity to interview uh, Mr. Kelly, you ask him the difficult questions. Uh, namely, why are there so many tapes? Because we know of three through our investigation, we know there are more than three. If everybody's lying, why are there so many accusers? Eight in the documentary, 48 that we know of. Why are there so many allegations by women that don't know each other? Why is there corroboration from your daughter? Corroboration from your ex-wife, corroboration from your managers, corroboration from your music teacher, if all of this is lies. Everybody is not coming for R. Kelly. People are coming for justice and to return their children to the state they were before they met Robert Sylvester Kelly. Can you just, just, just walk us through how Joyce Lynn first came into contact with Mr. Kelly and then the move from Atlanta? Just, can you just walk us through how they first came into contact, what she had hoped originally, and, and what had transpired in those two years? Well, Jocelyn first came in contact with uh, Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly at our boutique that we had on Old National. And uh, my wife and my daughter was there. I wasn't physically there. I was at another location at the time. And she wanted to pursue her music career. Jocelyn had always wanted to do music. Uh, at one point in time, she uh, stopped uh, doing music and she went off to college. And that's the whole thing, guys. Jocelyn was at college when this happened. She was not with me and my wife. She was off at school trying to get her bachelor's degree. And this predator came along and took her away from school. The last time we saw Jocelyn, we did an intervention tape. That intervention tape is on YouTube. And when we did the intervention tape, we took Jocelyn back to her college dorm with her roommate, dropped her off, and I said, anything happened from here, give me a call. I was headed back down towards Atlanta. We stay in Henry County. I was headed back down towards Atlanta. Her roommate called me and said, Jocelyn, someone came to pick Jocelyn up, and I haven't seen her since. She was off away in college. We didn't drop her off. We didn't do anything un unnecessary. She was away in college trying to get her degree, just like all you are. Y'all have tried to went to college and get your degree and do other things in life, as a normal young lady would do. And you had known and she had known, I assume, of the prior allegations years ago against Mr. Kelly, correct? Yeah, I have known some of the prior allegations against Mr. Kelly, yes, sir. And what was your reaction just initially when his name first surfaced, given the background and the, you know, the allegations he had already faced in court previously? I'm glad you asked that because when we met Mr. Kelly, well, when my wife met Mr. Kelly, I never met him. Uh, we was there for business as far as Sony. We was there that his manager was saying that Sony wanted to sign Jocelyn, and that's what we was there for. Kelly was just going to be an executive producer on the uh, album that she was going to put out. So that's what happened. And you so were okay with that? I was okay with him being an executive producer, not actually being the predator that he is right now. Y'all got to understand, y'all got to understand, our Kelly, y'all can't take his talent away for one. So when my parents, when we found out that, you know, R. Kelly wanted to work for my sister musically by writing songs for her and stuff, R. Kelly is known as a music genius. So therefore, like I said earlier in the press conference, I said it's no different from Kiki Palmer trying to work with him after the allegations, Lady Gaga, Chris Brown. It's no different from that. It was business only, and I don't think people understand that. So people have to get that through their minds. R. Kelly is a music genius. So therefore, it was only for music purposes only, nothing else. 
And I uh, just want to add a simple Google search will tell you the many artists that he's worked with since that trial day, since he was acquitted from that trial as well. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, Well, I, I don't know if she was susceptible. I think that'd be a better question for her and, and understanding that she may very well uh, speak on CBS. Uh, I would ask CBS why they didn't contact the Savages and provide for a meeting uh, with Joyce and Savage if they were going to interview her. But as far as the susceptibility, that's a question better suited for Joyce and Savage. As I stated again on the YouTube channel, we did uh, an intervention tape. We put it out so people can see what it actually went on. And on that intervention tape, we tried, uh, intervention is where you're trying to intercept and see what's going on, why she's in school, why she's not uh, doing certain things, why she's missing classes and so on. So we wanted to get to the bottom of this. And at one point, we uh, end up taking her back to her school. We wanted to go back up there the next day because we had a long day. and. Um, like I said earlier, we, we got back and we was traveling back towards uh, south and we got in the middle of Atlanta and that's when we heard that Jocelyn was no longer at that school. And so it, it's very heartbreaking, you know, for to hear that your daughter is uh, with someone of this nature. Uh, if I had to do it all over again, no, this would never even happen. But the most important thing here is that we're bringing this to light. We and me and my wife, we had the same meeting right in front of his house. No one ever did that type of meeting in front of his house. We want to see justice, not just for our daughter, not just for the Clara's daughter, but we want to see justice for all these young ladies that he's actually came in contact with, and even these 14 year olds and these young kids, we want to see justice for them. That's what we're here for today. We're here to stand in the gap for these young women and make sure that justice happens. And we want to pray for their families as well. When was and what was the last conversation that you had? The last conversation we had, it was in December of 2016. Uh, we had, far as physically seeing her, 2017, we had a brief prison call from her. And my wife was sitting by the Christmas tree on the floor. And when I walked in the room, the phone went, the phone hung up like it was a prison call. It was no longer than 15 seconds. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's as like if like somebody was controlling the conversation. So did she state anything or did you just hear? Well, she stated, Mom, I need you to say this is exactly what I need for you to say. And it was a text message. Sent something in a text message. When I came over and I said, Jocelyn, the phone hung up. So what do that mean? I don't know. The phone just hung up. Had got well the, the text message he had got word that we had met with another victim that had just left and um so she they found out so he sent a message to have her sent to me to try to get me to respond to it and that's what that was about last question for the parents we so i was saying yeah so we i wasn't really making the interview with a couple of people at work so what they did is after they <coughs> after they did the interview with her they asked you're going to talk to your parents again and she said uh, she said no because of what you described earlier in the interview. Um, you're optimistic that this is going to go in a direction where they may be able to speak to her again. Are you both, um, after watching her do that interview, what do you both feel is going to happen? Yeah, that's going to happen in two years. We, we, haven't, we haven't seen that interview, but we hope to see our daughter and get her the help that she deserves and she needs. Uh, hopefully she's well, but if she's not, we're going to move in a fashion to where we can get that help for her. Yeah. I think that... Um, what the family is preparing for is, uh, regardless of what happens to Robert Sylvester Kelly, uh, we will provide the necessary resources. We've received phone calls from counselors and psychiatrists from around the country who are willing uh, to, to accept uh, the charge to help Joycelyn. And uh, I've, I've seen a brief clip of the interview, and, and my concern is, if you don't want to see your parents, why don't you want to see your little sisters and your aunts and your cousins and your grandmother there's actually something going on. So, you know, I, I look forward to seeing the entire clip, the entire video, uh, but that's not going to change our resolve. 
You don't stop loving a child simply because the child doesn't know what's in their best interest. Uh, and, and so what I would say is it be in Mr. Kelly's best interest uh, that he gets Joycelyn Savage in contact with her parents. Uh, and we've always said that, which is why we reached out to his attorneys, we reached out to his managers. Uh, and so we look forward to seeing it. Uh, we will respond accordingly, but this has been a two-year battle and it will not stop based on one interview. I will take one more thing. I want to say one more thing. Um, the two girls, Joyce and Azarel, are the last two girls there, but when we initially became aware of what was going on, it was, a, it was between four and five girls in his home. So that it was definitely a harm or uh, I call it a sex cult at the time. Can you spell your name? Yeah, could y'all please spell your name? I'm Jonjolyn, J-O-N-J-E-L-Y-N, Savage, S-A-V-A-G-E. Timothy, T-I-M-O-T-H-Y. Jory, Jory, J-O-R-I, Savage, S-A-V-A-G-E. And how old are you? Um, 11. Jalen, J-A-I-L-Y-N, S-A-V-A-G-E. How old are you? I'm 18. And your daughter was how old and, and attending middle school? 18. She was 19 when she left. Right. That was her, and she's now 21? She was 21. Uh, she's 23 now. 23 now. 21 when you last saw her. She was yeah. attending what school? And we will be providing the, uh, the information. Uh, my assistant Dante has the information for the flights. Uh, just as further proof. Uh, of the statements that are inaccurate made by Mr. Kelly uh, and that we will continue to assist law enforcement and, and assist the other families in getting justice. So are there any, any other questions? We will probably make another statement. Uh, we may have some professionals with us that may be able to give analysis uh, because like I said, from the very beginning, we've been getting calls uh, of professionals who know uh, what Stockholm Syndrome looks like and what to expect from uh, individuals who have uh, been a party to what is alleged to be occurring in Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly's custody. All I can say is just look at the body language as they speak. You will close it off. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you guys. We really appreciate the coverage. And again, Dante has uh, the uh, documentary uh, evidence that we have, and we will be providing more to law enforcement.